Good morning, everyone. Nice to see you on a Saturday morning. Um, let's see who's going to join us. I've had a lovely request for um, how to draw some grass. And please forgive me, I've forgotten your name. Are you here watching me? There you are. Um, and I'm going to go right ahead and um, show you the lovely, lovely drawing that was done and um, how we can improve. I'm just looking on my phone quickly because I feel quite embarrassed that... Um, Carolyn! Yes, hi Carolyn. Okay. Um, Carolyn has produced a gorgeous picture. I'm going to transfer you over to see... <coughs> Um, I'm not showing you her picture. You can scroll down in the Get Drawing um, comments and you can see her picture. But she has a lovely um, <clears throat> watercolour that she has and she wanted to try to um, emulate those beautiful soft grasses <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a bit of a growly voice this morning. Um, so she wanted to see uh, what was going on with those grasses. Hi Deb, hi Heather, nice to see you. Hopefully Carolyn will join us um, soon. Um, I usually do wait for a few minutes for people to arrive, but she can watch this later. I've got a, uh, another few people there. Let me know that you're here, give me a wave. Okay, so you can see that beautiful soft watercolour of a hobbit's hole in the ground. There lived a hobbit and it's absolutely beautiful and a really good subject for the, um, the exercise that we did yesterday. <coughs> but she was concerned that her grass was not looking all soft and lovely like the grass in the pictures. So I said that I would come on board and um, see how I can help you and you can all join in. So what I've done is actually I'm getting quite pleased with myself at how I'm uh, doing this. So we've got... Um, ah, I thought we would have two of these. I'm a bit disappointed in that, but anyway, you can see a close-up version of um, my working surface. Hello. Lois, hi, I haven't started yet, just had to get you a coffee. What a good idea. I should probably have one next to me too, but um, I don't. And uh, I've got a glass of water though, because my voice is all croaky. Okay, so, um, lovely soft grasses there. I, um, the way to really go about it, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the way to go about it really, if you are um, trying to emulate a watercolour, but you're trying to do it in dry pencil, is to go easy with your pencil. Of course, these are watercolour pencils, so you can actually turn them into a, a nice uh, washy thing. Heather, how do you swap the view from you to the screen? Ah, secret, secret um, video um, answers. Um, I use a piece of software called OBS. It is a free software and you have to set up your scenes beforehand. You can't do that live. You have to stream. And that's why you see something about 15 or 20 seconds later than I do. And um, I feel like I should be swapping the screen while I'm talking to you. So, uh, so I will. So I'm talking to you now. I've just dropped the, uh, swapped the screen. I probably should give you a private chat on, on how to do that. Um, it is a little bit complicated, but you, it can be done. So I've got two cameras. I've got my computer camera pointing at me um, now while you're looking at me. And I've got an overhead camera. Let me see if I can. There you go. That's my overhead camera. 
and I use the software <coughs> to swap from what you're seeing here um, back to seeing what's on my camera there. So that camera is set up on my pencils and things and I've also set up a picture of um, my camera and the little picture of um, a section of the Hobbit uh, picture. Okay, so that's the technicalities out the way. So now you can still see me drawing. It's a bit s strange because when I look up, you're about half a second, no, about 15 seconds later. So it can get a bit confusing. Okay, let's get into it. So what I was saying is that um, that watercolor is really quite soft. You can see that she's scratched in some of the grasses um, and they are white. She's also come back in with some dark. Um, so you could put an overlay down of color. Remember, we're putting down soft colors. Yes, I've got a green here and I find that a bit garish, which is why I'm knocking it back with a bit of those warm yellows underneath. And I might even add in some red to dirty it up. Remember I was talking about dirtying it up in my video yesterday. <clears throat> and the thing that I like to remember, and I will show you um, real grass as well. I've got a picture of that somewhere. I thought it was going to be on the screen, but it isn't. Um, just be gentle. So instead of doing, you know, big grass things like that, you can see that looks way too strong for the gentleness of all this color. If you press hard at the beginning and then flick it up, so I'm exaggerating that movement, what you'll get is the trailing off of the, um, of the grasses and try and be quite random about it. So I'm obviously putting in a lot more grass than is um, in the in the little swatch next to you. Um, and I'm using a green, how about that? But if I use, oh, let's say I've got a purple waiting here from before. If I add that over, can you see how it's becoming a little bit more interesting? So you don't have to have real grass color. <clears throat> Let's pop some red in there even. Okay, so it's also very random. So what I'd like you to bear in mind is, and I've seen this fairly often in uh, work that, that uh, my students have done and work online, is try not to have regular areas. I'm trying to find a thing. So let's say one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, you know, that sort of thing, that sort of soldiers lined up. Um, try and be much more random than that. Use some soft pencil work and some strong, and they go a bit higgledy-piggledy and over each other. Okay, so that is my best... Um, advice on drawing the grass and trying to emulate the beautiful grass that is in this watercolor. I'll show you the big image again. Um, okay, so that's a close-up image of the front of the, um, of the, <clears throat> and that is only appearing on my screen now. So that gives you a, an idea of my lag. But you can see that the grass tufts there, they are not very many of them, but they are very gentle. And in fact, there aren't any in front of the step. There's only um, directly in front of the doorway and off to the side. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move to a picture of some real grass. Oh, that doesn't seem to be working. That's not good. I wonder why. Oh, goodness. I'm 
a bit dismayed at that. I thought that I had it all planned. While I'm talking to you, I'm going to try and add it again. See if we can get it up. Why isn't it working? Oh dear, oh dear. Hobbit grass is there. And my Moenjum grass is not there. My apologies, everybody. Um, I will go back to my webcam and you're just going to have to wing it. I thought I was all organized to show you um, some grass, but I will still give you some information. Okay, first of all, grass um, obeys anything that you're doing in the landscape, obeys the laws of perspective, so that if that's our picture that we're filling in, I might actually zoom in on that so you can see that a bit closer. I'm quite chuffed with myself that I'm figuring out how to do this on the fly. So there we're zooming in. And I'm going to move that. There you go. I th that is the closest I can get. So I um, hope you can see that a bit more zoomed in. Okay, so if that's your photograph or if that's your coloured piece, things that are in the foreground are going to appear much bigger that, than things that are in the background. This image of uh, grass um, in Derby had a, a lake flats in the middle and it had lots of grass here and the pieces in front were large and the grass at the back, right in the background, was just a layer of um, of scrub in the background and you couldn't see anything at all but we're concentrating on what's going on in the foreground and um, I'm just picking up any pencil actually the, the pencils from yesterday are still lying around um, the front grasses depending on where the camera is they can go even higher than that lake because if we're coming in from a low angle we'll see those grasses and they would also be coming up from the bottom. So don't be afraid of having them go out the edge of the picture. <clears throat> um, and then as they get further back, they get smaller and smaller and they go very quickly, tiny, depending on how far away, obviously, that lake is. Um, I... I will post that Mojum picture um, in the feed. It wasn't actually taken at Mojum itself. I did go there a number of years ago and we stayed in Derby. Um, but I went up there to do some arty things and um, play things with the kids up at Mojum and it was absolutely wonderful. Okay, another thing to bear in mind when you are doing the grass is that don't worry about putting some strong darks in because there will be shadows in between the the bits of grass and so if you just put all yellow like that let's say it's dead dead wheat or you know dead long spindly things of grass um that looks pretty boring and they're all overlapping so um, let's get my favorite. Uh, oh no, that's not my favorite. That's Prussian brew. Okay, that's a lesson in. The color on the shaft is not necessarily the color that you put down. Although, if I had to, were to wet that, and I've only got a finger because I didn't bring a brush, you can see the color there is much, much different to the color of a pencil. I was going to say that it was my favorite indigo. Is that my indigo? That's my indigo there. Okay, so if I put a couple of bits of dark in between those grasses, you can see um, them better. Okay, so even the grasses that I'm doing now are a bit head, 
coming from my head because I'm not using a reference. I really do like using a reference all the time. And um, so I'm tending to do, you know, big, it's not quite as exaggerated as a tuft of grass. And sometimes we do get tufts that look like that, but generally they're a bit spread out. And even if they're not, even if they are tufts like that, don't have them separate on your drawing. They will be overlapped. So the ones at the back will be overlapped by the ones in the front. So don't keep a big space between all your tufts of grass. Bringing in my favorite yellow, if, um, yellow, red. If you're doing Australian grass, so this is a bit of a multicolored grass situation. <laughs> and as we go further away, another bit of perspective, the colors of the grass in the foreground will be slightly warmer than the colors of the grass in the distance. So by warmer, I mean I'm using an orangey yellow, not a cool yellow. And it'll show more red. And then we can get a cool yellow, Let's grab one, a cool yellow for the distance. Because color perspective means, aerial perspective means that the grasses will cool off as they go further away. But they will definitely become less detailed. I've probably even put too much detail in there. Um, I think that's just about all I can do without having a, a photograph in front of me. I am very much one for observation based drawing. Although when I've observed something very, very often, I am able to draw that without looking at it again. But those general things that I've told you about are how we put grass in. So I hope that's helped. I can't help myself. Continuing, I'm making that a bit more green by adding some yellow. You can see that I have used a green pencil, but I'm not relying on it. I know some grass is uh, nice and bright, but if you put down grass that's this color, that may be a bit too bright. So as soon as you add in a little bit of red, very, very softly, you knock back that garishness. And it becomes a little bit more realistic. And don't forget that blue and yellow make green. So you might not need your green pencils at all. I think I'm going to leave it there. I will put my face back on for you to see. My morning face. Quite, more, quite early for me to get up on a Saturday morning. But it was good incentive to get up and going. Good morning everyone. And uh, I'll see you on Friday, if not before. Have a lovely day. Have a great weekend and get drawing. Bye.